This time we head back 200 years and visit the birthplace of the celebrated writer Charles Dickens. Join us as we find out about his early family life and see the room in which he was born. This is Old Commercial Road in Portsmouth, England, now a leafy residential area. Back in 1809, it was known as Mile End Terrace, and John and Elizabeth Dickens, newly married, rented a house here for £35 a year. John was hired as a clerk in the Navy Pay Office and relocated here from London. It would be their first home together. This is number 393, the home they rented, a gorgeous Regency-style property. The house numbers were different when they lived here, and it is unclear what that would have been. Their first child, Frances, or Fanny as she was fondly called, was born within these walls in 1810. The family would be joined by Charles John Huffam Dickens on the 7th of February 1812. He was just five months old when the family moved to another house in the city. His time here was therefore very short. John and Elizabeth would go on to have eight children in total. The home opened to the public in 1925 and you can visit it on various dates throughout the year or by appointment. Please check out this website for opening times and tickets. Apart from a kitchen dresser, all the furniture and fittings are period recreations to give us a feel of how the home might have looked. There is, however, one very special historic possession belonging to Dickens on display, which we'll see later. We enter the museum down the steps into what was the kitchen, now the shop and ticket office. On this level was also the pantry and scullery. All the cooking and heating of water came from this open grate fire and oven. This white dresser, now used for displaying souvenirs and books to buy, is the only original item in the house. Built into the wall and integral to the support of the upper floor, it has to have been here since the property was built. Climbing the stairs to the first floor, we are in the hallway, with the entrance to the front door leading on to two rooms and straight out to the back garden. The parlour is where visitors would have been shown on arrival and is at the front of the house. The wallpaper and paint colours all over the property closely match the originals found when curators examined the layers on the walls and wooden frames. The furniture and decor are indicative of a 19th century middle-class family. The Dickens would entertain friends and colleagues here. John was a likeable man but not very good with his money, regularly getting into debt and living outside his means. Moving house was a regular feature of Charles's early life, mostly due to John not being able to pay the rent and with bailiffs after him. This caught up with him in 1824 and John was imprisoned in the Marshalsea Debtors Prison. Charles was forced to work to support the family. This experience had a profound impact on him and he later used it as inspiration for the character of Mr Micawber in his novel David Copperfield. The dining room is typical of the period, in fact this mahogany table dates from 1810. The blue and white dinner service for everyday use. If the family had any silverware, that would have been plated, as they couldn't afford real silver. Moving on to the second floor, the front bedroom is where Elizabeth gave birth to Charles in 1812, being christened a few days later in St Mary's Church. 
A small unglazed porcelain bust of Charles sits in the corner. The four-poster bed, similar to one the family might have owned. This one is in a Georgian style. The pine cradle for a newborn at the foot of the bed. The fireplace heated the room and was used for drying clothes hung from the clothes horse. They would have probably employed one or two servants to help run the house for one or two shillings a week. They would have fetched hot water from the kitchen, the only place it could be heated. By 1813 the Dickens family moved to their third and final property in Portsmouth. Another son, Alfred Allen Dickens, was born in March 1814, but he died in September. At the end of the same year, John was recalled to London and the family left Portsmouth forever. The other bedroom has been converted into an exhibition room with information and interesting artefacts relating to Charles, the family, his friends and acquaintances. This is an original rent book for the house and notes that the Dickens were regularly late with rental payments. Charles based Little Dorrit in the novel of the same name on Mrs Mary Ann Cooper and these are a pair of spectacles and a ring which belong to her. This is an inkwell that Dickens used. The largest and most important item is this dark green couch. Donated to the museum by Charles' sister-in-law Georgina Hogarth, it came from Gads Hill Place, Higham, Kent, the last property he owned. It's believed he died on this couch on the 9th of June 1870 at the age of 58, although there is some speculation over this claim by some biographers. Through the window we can see out into the small walled back garden that is not accessible to visitors. Heading up to the top floor these attic rooms, one of which is open, would have been the domestic servants' quarters or for children's bedrooms. It is used as an education room in the museum. The museum is a wonderful place for any Dickens fan to explore, and even those that just want to see what life was like in a Regency house of that period, we do highly recommend visiting. If you want to continue following his life in 1837 when he was famous and living in London, then join us for a tour of his Georgian Terrace house at Christmas. We visited this wonderful property back in 2021 and it holds many more personal possessions including his writing desk where he penned Oliver Twist and Pickwick Papers. The link will be at the end of this video. Do subscribe for more like this and we'll see you again on the next one. Thanks for watching The Memory Seekers.